Hello, Bright Blessings. It's me, Tess Whitehurst. And today I want to talk to you about um, comparing yourself to others. So first, if you do want to listen to this little bit of spiritual coaching, <laughs> then first come into the present moment. Just cleanse, settle in from wherever you've been on the internet. Take a deep breath. Feel your weight on the earth. Let the past go, let the future be, just be here in this space, in this present moment. Okay, so comparing yourself. So I wanna start by talking about a story about me when I was six years old in first grade. <laughs> so I remember being in first grade and that was the year that being first in line started to be a big deal. Like you get in line for lunch and you get in line to come back from lunch or you know, whatever, wherever we were walking from one place to another, we got in line and it was like, everyone wanted to be first and if you weren't first you wanted to be second or third like definitely not last and I remember starting to get really uncomfortable about that like really stressed out like apparently you know it, we're social creatures so if this for some reason is really important to everyone it must be important and it must be important for my status in some way so it was really starting to gnaw at me my little six-year-old self and I remember having a talk with myself like you know what we all get to the cafeteria and we all eat like maybe I'll eat a second or two later like a few minutes after the people in the front of the line but it was I, I realized that it actually wasn't worth it to me to be first to like stress out about being first that that stress wasn't worth you know what getting to the cafeteria sooner than the other kids so I purposely would even be last I would just be like I'm gonna let everyone else go and then just it and even if I would have like some social shame come up about being last I would just like be like you know what I have to let that go because I just can't live with the stress of trying to be first in line anymore which I love this story about myself because I would like to look back and see that even then I was looking for ways to try to be more at peace, you know, to try to question the big story so that I could be more at peace. And I was. And this, the reason I'm telling you the story is because it is so similar to the ways that we can compare ourselves socially as adults. You know, it's like, oh, that person already has this amount of money or they already have a house that they own or maybe they own more than one house or they're married and whatever the and in they have that thing and you think oh that means I should have already had that thing by now you know this is one example of how we do that or I should look this way or even I should be that age which is like okay yeah no there's no power that you have over that Plus, we, it's very fair age. We all get to be the same age for the same amount of time. It's quite fair. I mean, those of us who get to be older, um, then that's a privilege. But anyway, so the point is, um, we can feel like we might feel that as social creatures. We might still feel like, ooh, like that pang of, oh, I should have that, or I should be that rich, or I should have that marriage, or whatever. But when we look at it and you look at it like, is that really like so really? So that's so important. This external standard because of someone I used to know in high school that I just saw on Instagram or because of some story or because my parents wish I had kids or whatever it is. If you like look deeply and you're like, is it worth like measuring up to that standard that isn't really even my standard? Like, is it worth me getting that stressed out about this really imaginary story? So looking at that stuff can bring us such peace. We could just realize we're doing it at our own pace. Everybody's doing things at their own pace. And we don't really know also. Like, I mean, I'm thinking about how since I'm an author, a spiritual author and a teacher of spiritual principles, that I know that there are people who expect that I never get angry, that I never feel um, bad about myself or never snap at anybody or never feel, you know, like 
oh, I want to make some money today, <laughs> you know, or whatever, like these normal human things that we think and feel. And this is just, it's not true. There's never, if there's ever a spiritual teacher that is actually trying to portray, oh, hey, guess what? I never feel jealous. I never feel greedy. I never feel angry because, you know, I'm this elevated being that doesn't have those feelings. That's false. That is a false story because humans have those feelings. And that is, it, the, the point of spirituality is not to become this perfect being that never has any negative feelings at all. It's even to embrace those, to acknowledge those, to let those be there, but also to let there be space around them, to let there be humor and lightness with them, to start to have a relationship with yourself where you forgive yourself and have compassion for yourself and kindness for yourself. So these are the points where we have this ability to look beyond this, um, these stories we tell about other people and how that relates to us and let that even be, oh yeah, like this is an opportunity to go into a greater sense of kindness and compassion and presence. Okay, so that is my little bit I wanted to share with you today. And this is, if you like this, this is very much what my new book, The Self-Love Superpower, The Magical Art of Approving of Yourself No Matter What, this is very much like that book. So that is that comes out in September and you can pre-order it now. And you can also come to my free book launch event online on August 26th. So you have to sign up for that so you can learn how to do that at tesswhitehurst.com and go to about and appearances. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful, magical weekend.